Greetings, it's uh, Friday, August 26, 2022, and regrettably I have to start this today on a very sad note. Uh, we at the city were notified yesterday that uh, uh, we lost a Batavia police officer who had been a 31-year veteran of the Batavia Police Department, and his name was Tom Lambert, and Tom had been... Uh, on with us from the latter part of the last century into the current century. And uh, he was always remembered very fondly by the members of the department because uh, he certainly liked to do stuff that was supportive of kids and the youth. And there were several times I know that uh, back in the day when George Kramer was still the captain of the Batavia Police Department, and George had a tradition that every summer he got some folks to give him money and they rented a bus and they put all the patrol boys from the then four elementary, later six elementary schools we had in town. And the patrol boys and girls would all get a treat to get on the bus and then go to Chicago and go to a Cubs or a White Sox game. And then on the way home they'd stop and have some hamburgers someplace. And it was a big deal and George always told me he he needed a couple extra hands there to help him kind of keep an eye on what everybody was doing. He didn't lose anybody and whatever. And Tom was always one of those that wanted to be there and be part of that. So I think that speaks to his nature and his generosity and his uh, commitment to our community. Uh, he came from a law enforcement fire department family. I know his father was in public safety and his his son, uh, for a number of years, has served as the fire chief down in North Aurora. So uh, Tom is somebody that uh, is uh, well known in the public safety arena. And we are certainly exp expressing to our, his family our sincerest sympathies for somebody who really did make a very positive mark of difference and good for the world. And I'm sure over his time on the department, he probably saved a life or two and did a number of other things that were most commendable. So there's going to be a wake at the Moss Funeral Home this coming Monday night, which I guess if I look at the calendar correctly would be August 29th and there's going to be a memorial mass for him at Holy Cross Church on the morning of Tuesday, August 30th. And I would, if you were interested in going to either, I would encourage you to get on the computer and look at the Moss uh, Funeral Home website, and they'll give you all the times and dates and whatever. And same with the memorial service out at Holy Cross, they'll have all that there too. So uh, it's always sad when we lose somebody who spent a good part of their life just doing good things and working for the city of Batavia and worked most honorably. and worked very strongly to make this a better world. And so uh, a lot of things were done very positively by Tom and uh, I just wanted to pay a word of tribute to him in this particular segment. As I think about some other stuff that, <coughs> excuse me, that's happening in the world, uh, I do, as you know, read every day the latest reports from the Batavia Police Department. And uh, a couple things come right out at me as I read these. Number one, uh, uh, we con continually have uh, connivers and criminals, I would describe them, trying to break into people's computer systems in your home. And they're trying to get people to give them your social security number or your credit card number or your whatever number you got, they can figure out some way that they can somehow evolve this into the system and get your visa card to send them $490 or whatever and then once they do it they're long gone and you're out the money. So I, I guess I just want to, I know you've heard me say this several times before, but I just want to continuously encourage everybody to be very cautious if you're dealing with anybody you don't know and there's any type of money changing place on the computer because there's a lot of funniness that's going on on a day-to-day -day basis. And the other thing that we continuously see a rise in in Batavia, no, this is not unique to us. I'm talking to our neighboring mayors and police chiefs and fire chiefs and all the towns, and there's been a real spike in mental illness the last year or so. 
and uh, the ambulances and the police and the fire are just heavily taxed now on a daily basis with people who need some type of mental treatment and many times there's not much they can do but I guess we take them up to the hospitals and I know Mercy Center right now is working on expanding their mental service wards and so uh, that's just another ch challenge that's come out at us in the last month or year and so I just want everybody to be aware if you know somebody that's having a problem f please feel free to you dial 911 and invite the Batavia police and fire over because there's where it should go and uh, they will take care of it but it is a very very bad situation and one that if you're, if you're good at saying prayers I would encourage you to say one for the Batavia public safety people as they go about dealing with the increasing volume of mental illness that we seem to be having in Batavia and as we are in every other one of the neighboring towns. So uh, I get that one out of the way and I just want to kind of, I want to try to end this on a positive note. And so I just want to share with you the number of people that I've chatted with me in the last few weeks telling me what a great time they had this year at the Batavia Quarry and how good the park district had kind of remade the place and remodeled and put in a new roadway going in and made sidewalks down there and they really were able to kind of re-enjoy the place and some people told me they hadn't been in that place in 20 years and they just couldn't be more pleased by what they saw at the Batavia Quarry under the design of the Batavia Park District. And to shout another positive si a word, I want to speak out to our friends at the Batavia School Board. Uh, as you know, they have rebuilt the Batavia High School athletic field out on West Main Street. And they've replaced the bleachers and they've replaced, the, I guess, the lights that were around. The original lights that were there were getting old, so they took all those down. And they delayed the actual start of the Batavia football season this year by a couple of weeks. The team, I believe, is playing this weekend, but they're playing off out of town, and I think they're going to for the next couple. And the first game, I'm led to believe, is going to be on homecoming weekend, which is going to be September 16th and 17th. And so that will be the day when uh, Batavia will maybe have its first home game. But uh, I'm told we have a very good team, and... Uh, one nice part about it is I'm told that we are returning the BATV to the air so that the Batavia football and basketball games will be available for people to watch on their local computer or TV set. And uh, we will be uh, watching with great interest uh, as they go about it because as, as you know last year we had a state champion in the track and field group and we've had in the last number of years we've had two uh, state championships in football and I'm told we got some pretty good, talented boys out there that are going to really hopefully give their opponents a run for their money. So uh, let's look forward to a good season in the fall here for the Batavia High School Athletic Program and thank the school district for all they do to keep that field up and modernized and make it a friendly place for people to come in and, and have a uh, nice memory of the games. So with that, I'm going to quit. Uh, have a nice week, and I look forward to talking to you all next week. Thank you.